Heavy fighting around the capital had done little but gift the Ottomo chances to edge the front lines forwards, with important castles and commanders falling in the process. The daring march of Sugutsura prevented reinforcements from reaching the area, and indeed it was the Ottomo who saw their numbers boosted by newly arrived armies. Their big weakness remained, however. Armies could land almost anywhere in their domain and wreak havoc uncontested. The battle to ensure this didn't happen saw fresh action almost every day. At last, events have calmed down enough to write of them. We reached port in Wakasa province and immediately received news that surprised even me. The young Lord Sugutsura has departed the post from which he was to be relieved, and from which I was to return him to his father. He left long ago by all accounts, and by the same accounts has won a string of tremendous victories that have broken the coalition's hold on the region. Lord Kobiakawa marches to the capital to inquire as to his current whereabouts. There seemed to be a silent agreement that actually extracting him now would be a hefty blow to troop morale, but on the other hand, not doing so could result in a hefty blow to one's neck. Perhaps though it is not the impetuous lad that blesses us with victory, but the Nanban. He has a host of their troops and land guns, which the people here murmur about with terrified awe. I ferried a company of them on this voyage. They keep to themselves and can't speak an intelligible word to us anyway. There was one occasion where they were groaning about something or other, until one of them came up to the deck and picked a bird from the sky with a single shot, going then to the forecastle where it had fallen and taking it triumphantly back to his brothers. I suppose they were hungry, but I shall judge not their barbarian manners, for I too am indebted to their productivity. I learned of many battles, big and small, in which my fleets took part, all but one was a victory, and that defeat has supposedly sent Yoshiaki into a rage or a panic. Truly, we remain fragile. Any man not safely ensconced on a Nanban vessel must still fear the horizon. And even we lucky sailors must wonder what powers are out there which can reach us too, for the Nanban themselves consider these ships to be of despicable quality. We may not be at their mercy as it stands, but should they wish it to be the case, we would find great difficulty in resisting. Hard to stop thinking about such things. Hello, welcome back to Barbarian Masters. Right now we've got Sugutsura facing the Azai, who we besieged last time and have now sallied out against him, as I had hoped, with no additional reinforcements from other clans. So just starting things off by blasting their army with our cannons as they come in, going to inflict plenty of casualties here, a couple of hundred at least before this battle gets started. And the enemy are going to have to just run out as they can't wait for their reinforcements because of the pressure from these cannons. So they'll make the battle a bit easier still. Once they get closer, we'll open up with other things. We've got our Turkios and our Archers to hit the enemy's advancing troops, in particular getting some nice hits on these Naganata Samurai, who are otherwise harder to take down, and they are just going to be running right at us. Here I notice you see a full volley of fire arrows actually hit the Turkios, but none of them died, a nice testament to their super high armor value. They're just immune to really powerful archery attacks. Now the enemy's cav, making my life easy by just running right into my anti-cav samurai. Very nice of them. And really the enemy don't have much chance in this battle. You can see the balance bar is already in our favor even before things get started. And they'll have to attack uphill against our prepared position. We've got archers, we've got firebomb throwers and our gunners helping out along the whole line. And a lot of the line isn't even really engaged so we can do our flanking maneuvers. Here the firebomb throwers go a tiny bit wild. Blasting at some of our own troops, I expect there. There was a tiny gap in the line, so it was kind of nice they could throw into it and stop the enemy actually going through it there. 
Not that they necessarily would have tried. Now, all along the front line, we just won our melees very quickly and can start advancing forwards now to hit things like the archers further back. Sugatsura going to join this effort, chance for some easy kills, easy glory against these Ashigaru troops. Now, as they start to retreat, the enemy's reinforcements will also rout because their army has lost too much, so we ended up not having to fight them, which made things easier. So now the battle is won with really only minor casualties, perfectly acceptable casualties for what we did to the enemy. We got everything there, although actually we're not going to get the castle we're besieging because their new daimyo spawns inside the siege. So technically there's something in there so we can't move in right away like you sometimes can when defending a siege sally. That's slightly inconvenient, but of course we can just auto resolve that guy next time. Now here come the Saika for an attack on Osaka Castle, so that's nice. I wanted to try and defend this castle, so I'm glad it actually happened. We don't have the best force inside, but they're not attacking with the best force either, so that's not a huge deal. And it's going to be a nice chance for our new general, Daihoji, to actually take part in a fight. They did have some fire projecting mangonels, pretty nice for a siege attack, so I need to watch out for those. The first thing I did was actually send my horse archers outside the castle, just so they could wait around on the edge of the map and maybe come in useful later on. But I didn't notice I was running right past these foot archers who now unleash volleys on our guys, and we actually lose half the unit as I try moving it off to some forest. So that's pretty inconvenient, and I didn't notice it because I was microing my units elsewhere. I'm not going to bother defending the exterior of the castle, as you can see. I've got all my guys on this interior island, since that's where the enemy are going to have to get to at some point. And I was just moving those units around constantly, not sure how the enemy would actually approach it. Meanwhile, Daihoji himself is actually charging out with his Hatamoto. Although I say that, I think the officer isn't among this group. It's just the Hatamoto guards, because some of the unit stayed behind in the castle for whatever reason. Bad pathfinding, I guess, on this custom map. And we took pretty hefty losses getting up to the Mangana, although now that we're here, we'll annihilate the crew, still losing nearly half the Hatamoto to achieve that is unfortunate. At least it means the enemy will stop blowing up our towers as they had been with those mangonels. And you can see back here on this bridge, there's some element of the Hatamoto. And maybe the officer is inside one of those guys' models as they're all stuck together weirdly. Anyway, so all we need to do is wait for the enemy to come into our interior part of the castle. They're going to be taking plenty of losses as they climb things and take shots from towers on the way in. And interestingly, these towers seem to be special towers for this custom map. They shoot very quickly. Quickly. Normally it's a shot every couple of seconds. These ones seem to shoot multiple times per second. So they were actually annihilating enemy units as they came over the wall and doing very hefty damage indeed. And as a result, actually only a very small portion of the enemy's army will even make it to where our troops are stationed. I wish to confirm rumours of an approaching enemy army. Intelligence suggests that it contains some of the more fanatical members of the hostile Iki sect, sponsored and furnished with arms by the known rebels, the Saika family. Be alert that they likely intend to rescue the leaders of their cult from our captivity. As such, all prisoners are to be gathered in the main hall, and all captains are to establish defences in its immediate vicinity. Three men from every company must volunteer to guard the prisoners. Should the enemy breach the inner wall, the prisoners should be executed without delay. You will all be informed when the threat is neutralized and should remain at your posts until such a time, no matter the situation or rumor from officers that are not myself. Insubordination on account of my background will be punished by the harshest possible measures. It is the Shogun's whim to choose his commanders, samurai or not. Now then, please commence the operation as instructed. I will prepare rewards for bravery and ascertain the location of the enemy camp so as to facilitate the acquisition of additional victory spoils. 
Eventually, some enemies did get close to where our troops were, but upon arriving, they found we had regular archers as well, so that's going to add to the casualties they are taking. Many of the units were all messed up and out of formation because of the weird pathfinding on this map. Curiously, I noticed the enemy captured one of my towers, and that tower actually cleared out a gallery of my archers. They were very accurate and long-range, the towers on this map, as well as having their high rate of fire. I didn't even notice that happening, it was so quick until it was far too late. Finally, some enemies do make it to engage the couple of Ashigaru units I left just outside the gatehouse in this area to stop the enemy getting inside, and this battle isn't going to last very long. With our archers contributing to the enemy's casualties so much, they really had nothing for the melee, so they just retreated even though they were better units than what I was offering, and really that was the end of that. The enemy just had a couple more units alive at this point, and they're all outside the castle waiting around. I think those generals wanted to come in through this courtyard, but it's actually impassable, so the AI has just got stuck. And uh, rather than wait out the time limit to win the battle, I decided I'm going to have to go out and take out those units on their own so we can get up here a bit faster. And now I can actually make use of those horse archers I prepared earlier. Since the battle's continuing, a lot of the enemy's routing units will be able to escape the battle, or they would be, if I didn't have these cavalry outside. You would just go around killing everything to make sure we do lots of damage to the enemy. And while that goes on, we'll start slowly marching some men right to the outer part of the castle to try and and bring down those enemy cav. One unit comes over here to capture a tower on the exterior and that tower was able to shoot at these warrior monks who were standing around and they're just going to be completely wiped out. They'll just stand there until they're all dead because they're very disciplined. And I also had to bring up some archers to support my melee troops when I realized that that impassable courtyard actually stops me having any way to get out there to engage the enemy either. So it was a deadlock for a while but now the archers can get in here, drop a couple of volleys in and that convinces the enemy to start leaving. I've also prepared my horse archers in a hidden position back there who can run out now towards the enemy general just so our units are nice and close to theirs as the battle ends so the auto resolve will make sure the enemy dies at the end of this and to take out these two officers for free. So that was the end of that and as you see on the stats here we killed about 500 enemies but the enemy lost around 2,000 troops so about three quarters of the enemy's casualties were from climbing up walls or from towers and that's pretty impressive this position can probably hold very big armies indeed by the looks of things if only 25% of them even make it into combat. So with that all sorted, we need to come back to Sugatsura. He just has to auto-resolve this daimyo out of existence, as I said. It's a shame we didn't get the castle in the end turn sequence, because if we did, he would have immediately got a turn of replenishment and probably been at full strength right now. But no enormous deal, because his army is still in pretty good condition. So there we go, we take the place, and we've almost now made it uh, all the way back around to the capital. We'll fix up the fort and destroy the local Buddhist infrastructure. We certainly don't want that anywhere near us and now we'll begin the long process of converting it to Christianity so we can then leave. Now I noticed this castle near our border seemed like it didn't have a garrison or something because we just couldn't see anything there so I started edging those reinforcements towards it and the garrison just appeared when I was right in front of it there was some sort of strange thing going on with the line of sight here and now my army is actually stuck because I can't engage any of these uh, two groups the guys inside the castle or outside and I can't move away either because I'm trapped in their zone of control so we'll have to let the enemy attack us and just hope that goes okay further west I'm going to put all of my armies here in defensive positions as much as possible because while we probably could move out and capture an extra castle this turn we can't afford to move our garrisons out of these places we captured recently because of public order and because of Christianity not being here basically so we do need to take things a tiny bit slower the exception to that is with Yoshishige who doesn't really need to be here to defend his position and I thought he's probably eager to go and besiege the next castle over to the east so that Sugatsura can't do it however as you can see we were ambushed on the way there Fortunately for us, the force doing the ambush is the smaller of the two armies being involved. So they've got this small, somewhat damaged army ambushing us and then a big full stack coming out from the castle. So all we need to do here is try and survive the initial phase of the ambush by destroying that small force. And if we can do it fast enough, this will vaguely turn into a regular battle with the other army. 
We were quite fortunate as things started because the enemy are split into two groups on either side of us and we have a hill that's small enough to make it ideal for splitting our army into two groups to defend either side and we'll get the hill advantage on both sides so that's pretty good. We're immediately taking arrows since the enemy pretty much deployed in range of us but we can do the same thing back to them especially with our guns just smashing the enemy's cav down there. All the units in the southern group of the enemy's attack force were focused on going after my cavalry, who I'd thrown in there to engage some light cavalry right at the start of the battle. So that means my line here isn't really going to be engaged, and we'll just use the guns to keep shooting those guys down there. And on the north side, it's going to be a bit more involved here, a nice cavalry micro-mistake as I tried to rear-attack these enemy archers. Our own archers will be beating them in a skirmish though, so it's not so bad. And nearby, some of my Ashigaru have rushed forwards and managed to engage the enemy's Ashigaru archers in melee. Now a rear attack from our calf completely seals that deal. We'll now have a pretty decent local advantage there on the north side, so we can just take out the remaining units easily. Back on the south, our cavalry had to run away. They were actually doing pretty badly, even against the enemy's light cavalry, and the arrival of enemy samurai meant I had to get out of there. Still, most of our army is freed up, and now we're going to be focusing it on receiving the advanced cavalry of their reinforcement army. Since we can put our army together pretty solidly in the centre, those odd units aren't going to do much, and really we're just going to clear up and prepare for that regular field battle once the rest of the enemy army arrives. I see. I see what this is. I am the Shogun's heir and the spiritual center of Japan. And yet I too must be tested. It is one thing to prove your worth, and another to prove you have not been devalued. Thank you, Lord, for this chance to show my dedication to you. I know now the answer to my question. It is not time for me to stop seeking battle. That is why you have battle seek me. I will fight for you until your work is done, O oh Lord. I will make these people see your truth. Or I will send them to your vassal in Roma and have them make work out of their heathen souls. I thought that I would die just moments ago. Perhaps I did, for by showing me my mission, I am born again with renewed energy, breaking through the walls my father built for me to surpass him and everyone else. The rulers of Japan can be only two. You and I, O oh Lord. Everything went smoothly and there's Yoshishige now sitting behind a gigantic wall of troops ready to receive the enemy's main army. We've got our hill to sit on so we'll have that advantage to play with and as they get close we'll use our guns to start thinning the enemy out. They do have plenty of quality troops out here, lots of good melee samurai and ranged samurai and on the bushy here. So a decent army but we'll still have the advantage as we go into things because they'll lose a lot of troops before they hit our melee line thanks to our guns and our archers and over here in particular a whole unit of katana samurai was actually defeated even before they reached us so that's going to save the yari ashigaru they would have had to face quite a lot of trouble and we freed up our left flank a tiny bit as well so most of the melees are going to be not particularly advantageous for us at least they did send their cavalry in to fight with our spears that was nice but in general we're going to need to do a bit of maneuvering to get out of this without extreme losses on some of our units. I sent my cavalry around to the enemy's flanks to do just that, but the enemy reacted to this pretty well. In particular, they had this one unit of spears in reserve that pulled a very cheeky maneuver. They kind of charged in two directions at once, and by splitting the unit into three groups there, actually forced me to call off my attack with both of my cavalry units at the same time. One unit is going to go and rear attack the enemy's melee troops uh, on the front line, so that's going to clear things up pretty well. And now another unit from the other flank and the unit that did get past the spears will try and attack the enemy's archers. However, it's not going to go as well as I thought because I forgot essentially that these archers are on a bushy. That means you actually can't kill them with cavalry. These samurai archers here are fair game, but on a bushy are an anti cavalry unit. So once you attack them, they pull out their naginatas and just completely destroy our men. 
We lose almost the entire unit in a few seconds before I realized what's going on and order them to leave, but I think they routed as they tried to escape. So that was very bad news and the loss of a high quality cavalry unit there. At least we won the melee as you can see our units are now charging forwards all over the place. So the battle is going to be victorious for us eventually. We'll just have to get all these archers into melee with our remaining melee troops. Lots of them just Ashigaru, so that's no problem at all. Our samurai will have a go at them. Although that guy there got a bit too enthusiastic by the looks of things. Off the enemy go and now the enemies on a bushy will be subject to our ranged fire against which they're not particularly well protected and being only a small unit they can be taken down very fast. Off they go. Now I did have to play the rest of the route phase because the enemy's army was mostly reinforcements and we do want to kill them as much as possible. So we'll now skip ahead to some time later. Here's the eventual result. We did get most of their army there by the looks of things. The damage on our side not too bad, a few units in very bad condition, but the army as a whole probably could still fight another battle as long as it's not too hard. And all that we really have to do with this army in this turn at least is go and attack the castle. There are a few units still inside, adding to the garrison, so it may have half a stack or so of troops altogether, and that gives them some presence on the balance bar here, so I can't just go right in and auto resolve safely. Fortunately, we have armies just around the place that can come over and help, and there's enough movement points here that I can bring this secondary army in to add to the order resolve and then just send it right back west to continue adding to any potential defenses of the castles over there. So there's the auto resolve. Easy peasy, Yoshishige has now actually completed a symbolic victory for us here because the capital no longer has any enemy territories adjacent to it. We've now got a ring of defensive castles, so we're quite firmly set here in the Kinai region. I wanted to find out what the enemies locally actually had. I don't really have any spies to do it, but I can use my geisha to just wander around enemy territory and see what's going on. And what we see is that the Saika don't really have that much left. Most of the castles nearby aren't garrisoned. There's one big army there in the center and some Kitapateke forces coming down from the south but it looks like we have about equal numbers to what the coalition forces have in the area. So that's a good situation as the defender, especially. The Saito attacked that army that got stuck in their zone of control and we actually get a really good retreat. They retreated very sensibly right back towards the Ashida castle so the enemy can't pursue there and everything was okay in the end. Spotted the Goto there setting up for a naval invasion very subtly. You can see a few ships going towards their island and their troops going to sit on the beach so you know it's going to happen. And now this is happening. The Saika came to attack us with one army that doesn't really have a chance of winning. I almost fought it myself but after a while decided that's probably safe to auto resolve and indeed it was we get a fine result and that's one more psycho army just destroyed along with a level three commander so that's all very nice looks like they're really running out of steam there although we do see armies still advancing towards us plus some of their allies advancing there too and a couple of armies definitely went into a hidden position and we didn't identify all of their locations at the start of the next turn so that meant I had to be cautious I couldn't really advance around the front line because there was an ambush somewhere and I didn't quite know where it was so I decided to just spend another turn holding my position since we kind of need to do that anyway and we'll see if the enemy can be convinced to throw away some more armies at some point and also the highlight of this turn will be that I've now got a spy who can go and find out what's going on over to our east Tell Yoshishige that I am indisposed and that his dinner will have to wait. Now everyone leave, quickly. Otomoro, what have you found? It is as you predicted, Master. The Takeda have been stockpiling supplies and gathering troops just a day's ride from here, mostly around Nagashima Fortress. Their numbers? 6,000 or more in the main group, perhaps 2,000 in reserve, and 4,000 troops from coalition members ready nearby. Only a small portion are samurai, but the Ashigaru are heavily armed and are said to be performing daily combat drills. Any notable officers? No, Lord, that is the most worrying thing. Commanders of low rank are heading each camp. I believe their main force, then, is yet to arrive. You have done well to discover this. If that is the case, then attacking at once is our best hope. But I would need Kobayakawa and his armies if he has any armies left after my brother's reshuffling. We can't do it. The chances are too slim. 
monitor Awari and Mino for any new arrivals. Oh, and have someone watching this castle, too. You suspect enemy spies. Allied spies. My father's arms are reaching closer. Sugatsura will have no luck getting Tarada to help him because we need to send that army back north to attack Echizen before the Azai create a new army and come down behind our front line. So we'll go secure that position and beyond Echizen it's just rebels. So once we have it, that will actually be uh, one of the approaches towards our territory pretty much secured. Kobiakawa's also now ready to step into the action, although as I said, I don't want to step too close to those enemy positions in case I get ambushed. So I'm just going to stand near all of our allies so everyone's reinforcing each other there. Decided that we haven't killed anyone in a while, at least when it comes to samurai nobility that is. My geisha have mostly just been killing enemy agents as they came into the area and have done a pretty good job of keeping agents away. We've had very little hassle from them, but they just decided to kill one of the Kitabatake's uh, officers, their son and heir, just to psych them out. And I'm still discovering more psyker armies to the southwest, so that's good to know about. My suspicion that the Goto were preparing another naval invasion turned out to be correct. They're right there. Uh, with just a couple of ships still haven't built any more and it's kind of annoying actually because if they had a bigger fleet we might actually get a battle and be able to defeat them they keep running away i could just attack them with one ship or something to force a battle but i didn't really want to risk it so far just making them run away every time seems to be working i've got another naval strategy i wanted to enact i've sent ships up to the top of the noto peninsula to the east because i realized that pretty much every naval invasion that has to come from the northeastern end of japan will end up going around the end of this peninsula at some point so by just defending it with our ships we can either stop them or at least see them this will function as potentially an early warning system where we'll know if they're getting anywhere near our territory and then we've got Uno just behind that position to hunt for fleets that do get past us so that's my plan to try and hold the enemy for now at least. We see enemy fleets just whizzing past our position there, so we can see them going by, although only for a split second, so maybe that will end up saving us from being invaded, I'm not quite sure. Here's the real action though, the Kitabatake army just charges forwards and attacks a castle, and this triggers a very messy situation. Four allied armies are being involved, and four enemy armies are being involved. We've got one gigantic showdown here, and because only 40 units can be on the field at any time. Both sides are going to have really weird army compositions as it draws units from all four armies at the same time. So it's probably going to be quite unpredictable, but whatever happens, it's certainly going to be very decisive. As the Otomo banner rose above yet more walls and was paraded across yet more battlefields, the coalition lost their ability to contest the capital. For the upper classes, this was a powerful signal, telling them that the time to resist the Otomo had passed. Indeed, such a time was likely years prior. All they could do now was submit to the ever-absent Shogun, the man known by his legend first and foremost, and a man who was happy to let that legend rule in his stead. Commoner and noble alike could only wait to see if the situation changed, knowing that the strange and cruel rule of the Otomo could not possibly be their fate. That is all for this episode. Thank you very much for watching. And of course, very special thanks to the officially Devon patrons. So we will tuck into that gigantic battle and keep an eye on what the Takeda have in store for us in the next episode of Barbarian Masters.